So, I hope you have enjoyed the experiment in the previous lecture. We implemented uh, the circuit which is on the board and we showed you how that cutoff region, that uh, active region and saturation regions appear as you increase this voltage. Now, this active region is uh, related to the amplification uh, action and here is the relation and it has to be in this linear region and then the voltage gain is given by that beta factor of the transistor and then divide in multiplied by this uh, R L and divided by this R B, this is R B. So, today I will again go to that same experimental setup, it is still there on the table and we will explore more on this uh, linear region. Uh, in this linear region or this active region, I will be varying this uh, input voltage which is given to this base circuit little bit by just varying this uh, variable contact here and then slowly we will increase or decrease, we will change this V i and we will calculate what is the change delta V i or delta V s. So, that will be the change in this uh, input voltage which will represent uh, signal, change in that signal voltage and then we will measure the change in this output voltage and we will calculate this delta V naught V O divided by delta V i. So, this experiment once again we will be doing and we, we will see that uh, how this ratio whether it is constant in this uh, active region or how does it, uh, it changes and then we will try to calculate beta of this transistor from our own observations. So, that is the agenda today. So, let me make a table to write the values, the data and we will have a column for the input voltage V i. So, different input voltages we will write here and then uh, this column I am leaving here this column is for delta of V i which is same as delta of V s right. Whatever change in the input voltage that is the change in that signal because V b b is always fixed in a given circuit. So, this is this will be here. Similarly, output V o that we will write here and then we will see how that output voltage changes that will be delta V naught. And then this will be our voltage gain that is delta V o divided by delta V i that is this voltage gain. So, different uh, readings we will note in different rows. So, let us take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to get the idea that how that it changes. Okay. So, I will be doing the experiment and uh, on the two multimeters you will have this V i and V o and then will I will ask uh, Mr. Ranjit to fill this table as I will call the numbers from the experimental table. So, you have the same circuit which we used in the previous lecture, here is that transistor and then all that collector, base, emitter, everything is it same that circuit is connected as such. This battery switch is open here, when we will connect it that uh, input biasing circuit will be on and of course, this variable voltage I have to put at different places. Then the positive of the battery, this is also open here, so when we will collect connect this, then that 9 volt will be applied to that uh, uh, 
10 kilo ohm resistor and from there it will go to the collector. So, the entire circuit is the same. So, let me connect it and I am putting this uh, thing here. So, now this battery, this cell voltage is falling on this whole uh, coil, whole conductor here and the positive I am connecting here. So, the circuit is complete for measurement. For measurement, we have to put on the multimeters. This is to read that uh, input voltage supplied and this will be in the range of 2 volts. Since I have not connected, it is not showing anything here. To measure that output voltage, we will be putting this one at uh, 20 volt range and you can see uh, it is already reading that voltage there. So, let us start taking measurements. Ranjit, you will be writing on the board. We have already drawn the table for you. In the first column, you will be writing the input voltage and in the third column, you will be writing the output voltage. We want to be in the active region, linear region to see that amplification thing. So, let me give this uh, biasing voltage somewhere here and you see the output voltage is hardly decreases 9.26. I am not in the linear region. I am uh, close to the end of the cutoff region where the curve has uh, started curving actually. Uh, initially, it was it is flat and after that uh, it curves and then it becomes linear, it decreases. So, I am in that uh, curved region. So, let me give some more biasing voltage. Yeah, input 0 0.746, output 5.68, 0 0.767 and 0 0.799, input 0 0.821, output 4.07. Input 0 0.842, output 3.61. Input 0 0.857, output 3.29. Input 0 0.875, output 2.89, 0 0.897, 2.41. And 2.00. Okay, so we will stop here, and uh, all these data have been noted on the board, and we will do the analysis. So thank you, Ranjit, for writing this data. So these are the input voltages V i, and these are the corresponding output voltages. So let me see what is this delta V i. So first I will subtract this from this. So, I have increased this V i by how much amount? So, this is 1 here and 2 here and 0 here. So, I have increased this V i by this much amount. I have subtracted this from this. right? Similarly, if I go here, 
I have increased it by how much amount? 2 here, 3 here, 0 here. Then it is, it is 2 here, 2 here and 0 here. Then it is 1 here, 2 here, 0 here. Then it is 5 here, 1 here and 0 here. Then it is 8 here, 1 here and 0 here. And here it is 2 and 2 and 0. And here it is 9 and 1 and 0. Please check, please verify if this subtraction is correct. Okay, this minus this should be here, this minus this should be here and so. Similar thing we have to do here. This is delta VO. So, I have to see how much this VO has decreased. So, I have to subtract this from this, this from this and so on. So, let me fill this column. So, I have to subtract this from this. So, 8 minus 2 is 6. Then here it is uh, 6 minus 2 is 4. Here it is 12 minus 4 is 8 and 11 minus 5 is 6. Here it is 14 minus 7 is 7 and 4 minus 0 is 4. Here it is 7, 7 minus 1 is 6 and 10 minus 6 is 4. Then here it is 11 minus 2 is 9 and 5 minus 2 is 3. Then here it is 9 minus 9 is 0 and 12 minus 8 is 4. Then here it is 9 minus 1 is 8 and 8 minus 4 is 4 and then it is 1 minus <laughs> 0 is 1 and 4 minus 0 is 4. Okay. So, this is delta V O. And now I have to take ratio delta V O divided by delta V I. So, this divided by this. So, let me take my calculator and do the calculations. All right, so delta V O is 0 0.46. So, 0 0.46 divided by 0 0.021, 0 0.021 equal to, this is 21.9, this is 21.9. Then 0 0.68, 0 0.68 divided by, 0.68 divided by 0 0.032, so 0 0.032 and that turns out to be 21.2, 21.2. 0 0.47, 0 0.47 divided by 0 0.022, so 0 0.022 and that is 21.4, so 21.4. Then 0 0.46, 0 0.46 divided by 0 0.021, 0 0.021 and that is 21.9, so this is 21.9. Then 0 0.32, 0 0.32 divided by 0 0.015, 0 0.015 and that is 21.3, this is 21.3. 0 0.40, 0 0.40 and that divided by 0 0.018, so 0 0.018 and that is 22.2, 22.2. Then we have a 0 0.48, 0 0.48 divided by, and this is 0 0.022, so 0 0.022, and that is 21.8, 21.8. You have 0 0.41, so 0 0.41, and then divided by 0 0.019, 0 0.019, and that is 21.6, 21.6. 6. All right. So, you see it is very linear delta V O by delta V I is almost constant, it is almost constant, it is between 21 and 22 and remember each measurement has a least count. When I write this uh, 746, this last digit here is least significant. So, there is an error of 0 0.001 here, there could be an error of 0 0.001 here and when you are subtracting the errors add, so it can be an error of 0 0.002 here and an error of 0 0.002 is not small because this whole number is 0 0.021. 
and if the error is 0 0.002 that means error is 2 in 21 is 10 percent. So, there could be a 10 percent error here. So, this is the uh, the scenario and similarly there can be an error of 0 0.02 here, but that error will be small because it is in 0.46 you have that error of 0 0.02 here so that is small, but here here that uh, error can be very large. For example, in this it could be 10 percent up to 10 percent. Here it will be less, it is a 2 in 32, so about 6 percent and so on. So, there is a error involved because of this uh, uh, when I am reading from the multimeter this last digit is always doubtful digit and therefore, uh, this is a excellent uh, con a constancy of this ratio and you have a really flat region in that uh, VOVI diagram. So, here the voltage gain is let us take some some average uh, what should I will not calculate the average what should be the average somewhere around let us say 21.5. So, this is uh, delta V O over delta V i this is let us take 21.5 and this is equal to remember we are taking magnitudes this is beta times R L over R B and this is beta times R L. What was R L remember in the circuit what was R L on the collector side we had added 10 kilo ohms. So, this is 10 kilo ohms and on the base we had added 120 kilo ohms. So, this is 120. So, your beta is 12 into 21.5. Can you work out without calculator? 12 into 5 is 60, so 6 here, 12 and 6 is 18 and 24 plus 1 is 25. So, that is the beta from our observations. So, that is how the amplification works. I have shown you the amplifying action. In a real amplifier, you will have many more things, you will have a lot of capacitors for filtering and other things and then uh, the signal will be some kind of a fluctuation on the average VBB. I have taken a gradually increasing signal, signals are not like that. So, all those things are there, but that basic amplification by the transistor that you must have felt through this data. Okay. Now, the next topic that we will be taking is transistor as a switch. The job of switch is to put a circuit off or on. Now, why I need a transistor in place of just a switch? We have so many switches in our household for each bulb, for each fan we have a switch. And we do not put any transistors there. So, what is the benefit of putting transistors and how it works? The benefit is as you know in the transistor circuit you have two parts, one is input part, one is output part. Now, this output part the current is higher. You have a current in beta times more current there, beta is 200 then 200 times more current is there. Input side is a low current part. Now, the current that goes through the base base part that I B is still a few tens of uh, micro amperes, whereas that in that uh, output part collector part that could be 200 times more. So, when we use transistor as a switch what we do is we control this output circuit through this input. You have already seen the cutoff region, the saturation region. So, if uh, somehow I decrease my VBB, the biasing voltage that I am applying on the input side, transistor will go in cutoff region. So, cutoff region, there is, there is no currents uh, anywhere, and at the output, you have uh, a full battery voltage VCC that appears there. So, uh, decrease this uh, VBB to a, a, a small value and you have output there, large output there. And then uh, increase this 
so that it goes in saturation. So increase this current here, IB here, increase that VBB there and what you have is a uh, very small uh, output voltage. So that output voltage can be switched, right, can be switched from high value VO which is which can be VCC to a very small value by controlling this VBB here. So what you are doing is you are controlling a large current circuit through a small current circuit. You are actually doing switching, you are actually doing switching in that base circuit, that VBB, that forward bias of base emitter junction. You are switching there, you are somehow changing that voltage to a low value to a high value. Right? The, the, the voltage that you apply to that base circuit, you change it from a high value to a low value, from a low value to a high value, that is the switching. So, you are switching in the base circuit and what we are controlling? The output, so there the switching is appearing there, you are doing something here and the result is appearing there. So, you are controlling a high current circuit from a low current circuit and that is the benefit, that is how that switching takes place and that is why transistor is used for switching. And in digital electronics, the switching from high value to low value at a faster speed is very, very important and all these things uh, make transistor a useful device for switch. So, the circuit of transistor as a switch will be same as this uh, common emitter thing that we had done. Let me draw it again. So, you have that uh, transistor and then emitter is grounded and on the base side you have your controls here. So, you have some resistance and after that you have some kind of uh, let us let me first put a switch here like this. This is the battery, biasing battery and then there is a switch out here. And on the collector side you have some uh, load, uh, maybe some kind of a lamp or some something else. You can ha still have a resistance and then you can have your biasing battery like this. So, here is the control and if the switch is open, this is in cutoff mode, there is no biasing there. Since there is no biasing, no current and therefore, uh, no current from here also. So, this IC is also 0, okay. this IB is here. If IB is 0, then IC is also 0, this is IE. And if you think of this uh, VO here, VO, then you are in this region, you are here, VI is 0 and VO is maximum whatever is voltage here that appears here, you are, you are in the cutoff region. And suppose suddenly you switch it on, suddenly you switch it on, you, you connect this, so that now you have a biasing voltage and this is sufficient to forward bias it. Then what will, will happen? You have the current, you have this IC, enlarged IC, saturation range, this is sufficient here to drive this into saturation region. So, in general we have a uh, VO, VI like this. So, you are here and suddenly you reach here. So, your VI is sufficient, this is sufficient. So, we are operating in the cutoff region and saturation region, then it becomes a switch, right. So, if you are not providing the current here, then there is no current here and this voltage is maximum. And if you are providing sufficient uh, biasing here, then you have sufficient current here, large current here and then this is almost 0 that we had seen. So, this is how it works as a switch. So, it is switching this circuit. The only important thing is it is switching this circuit, although I am putting the switch here. So, this is that low current part in which I am operating and I am controlling a larger current part. So, I will show you an experiment here on this table. And uh, the another interesting thing is, 
कि यू डोंट यू डोंट हैव टू कनेक्ट रियल बैटरी हियर एनी काइंड ऑफ वोल्टेज कंट्रोल इफ यू कैन हैव हियर व्हिच कैन ड्राइव दिस बायसिंग फ्रॉम ऑलमोस्ट जीरो टू ए लार्ज वैल्यू देन यू आर डन सो व्हाट वी विल डू वी विल पुट ए सोलर पैनल हियर वी विल पुट ए सोलर पैनल हियर ओके सो वी विल पुट ए सोलर पैनल हियर एंड देन व्हेन लाइट फॉल्स ऑन इट the voltage is generated and if this light is off then this is also no voltage here so just by controlling the light here you can control this uh, part of the circuit so let me show you on the table how this circuit is implemented and how a voltage here or light here can control this uh, appliance here so i have uh, already connected the circuit this is a solar panel on which some light is falling and it is being used in the biasing circuit of the base part i'll just show you that and on the collector side i have used this uh, bell here electric bell here and of course the resistances will be there we will be controlling this bell this circuit which is in the collector part which needs uh, sizable current through this base part so let me show you the circuit once again so what you have here is on that same breadboard similar circuit that we had shown earlier you have this uh, transistor this is a flat uh, surface here and this is a collector this is base and this is emitter and this emitter is already connected to this ground line this is my ground line so emitter is is grounded from the base you can see you have a resistance here this resistance is 10k resistance and then from here i am coming to this line this line this line this line here here in this hole that second line from the edge this one and this one we will be connecting to uh, this wire and this wire will be connected to the positive from the solar panel so i have the solar panel i have the solar panel and the positive of the solar panel is uh, is here so if i connect it here then this this base circuit is connected all right and the negative of the solar panel is connected here this is that uh, negative here this is that negative here of the solar panel so that will be connected here so let me connect that so negative is already connected and positive we will connect after describing the circuit so on the collector part you can see here is the collector this is the collector you know, when the the flat part is facing you the left side is collector and on the same row i have this resistance i have this 1k resistance and 1k resistance comes here and then in the same line i have this red wire and this red wire is going into the this this bell this red wire is going into the bell and from the bell we are coming back and that is connected here this is connected here and this is the last line this near the edge and this is connected here and this we will be putting the 9 volt biasing this 9 volt biasing we will be putting here so here the collector circuit is complete okay so you can compare with the circuit that is drawn on the board and we will be adding this plus here and you see the bell is ringing you can see this you can uh, listen the sound and perhaps you can also see the flickering of light here in the bell and now i am going to stop this voltage here the solar panel the light falling on the solar panel gone the bell is not ringing and when i allow the light to fall bell rings so i am controlling that electric bell from this light falling on the panel which is in the base circuit and which draws very very small current that is how a transistor is used as a switch